Hey everybody, NavyDoc5184 here and welcome to my next Star Wars Ahsoka reaction. Today we are reacting to part 7 and I am thoroughly looking forward to this one. Basically, they, I really don't even know where to start there. With last episode with Thrawn coming in, good lord, this is such a terrifying villain and he's played so well. And it's just weird to me how you would think of all the Star Wars villains there are, Thrawn is like the one that seems to intimidate me the most, but I think it's just the way he carries himself, his demeanor, the way he speaks and everything just sounds so intimidating. And it's as if he's just so well, like his stuff is so well thought out. He's always so many steps ahead that you just wonder, how do you outsmart him? And I think that's the thing that really makes him intimidating. Even when he found out Ahsoka was on her way, it wasn't like he panicked or anything. The fact that he wanted to know everything about her really tells me a lot about the type of villain that he is, that he's willing to just not go in and go at. He wants to learn the enemy. I mean, even to the fact, I'm very interested to see how he reacts when he learns who her master was, because that was one of the things he wanted to know. You know, does he look at it as, you know, she was trained by Anakin Skywalker, or was she trained by the person who became Darth Vader? Obviously, somebody that he served, you know? But, um, a lot to go on with that. I'm very interested to see what happens, uh, you know, between Balin and Shin, uh, when they find Sabine and Ezra, because you know they're going to. So I'm very interested to see what happens with that. Does Ahsoka get there in time, and what happens when Ahsoka even gets there? How, you know, how is she going to react to... Um, you know what Sabine did is she gonna try to give her the riot act or something or is she gonna be more understanding I feel like that is probably gonna be more the truth based on her experience on the world between worlds with Anakin and probably even depending on whatever story it was that Hu Yang told her while they're um, traveling in the space whales but um, I feel like that Ahsoka is going to be a little more forgiving for what Sabine did, probably understanding why she did it, and very interested to see how she reacts to seeing Ezra again, but then what happens when they finally meet up with Thrawn, you know? Honestly, I would not be surprised if we see an Ahsoka, um, Balin Skull rematch, because they're going to be going for the same people, but then again, what happens even when they get there, because they know the Space Wolves are coming, so they're probably going to have something ready for them, so, so many questions to be answered in this episode, and I don't know how many are going to be answered because with this being part seven, we know that this is the second to last episode in this series and oh boy. Question is, is there going to be a lot of action in this one or is this going to be a lot of setup? But either which way, I'm looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and get started with this for those of you that are members and are um, going to participate in the watch along uh, just make sure to use the timer in the bottom right hand corner to uh, use the time mark to know exactly where I am in the show and let's go ahead and get started okay so it's like we're starting at the New Republic we simply cannot allow a general of the New Republic security forces to go around acting like this is still a rebellion this is a government I'm not going to lie, I'm starting to hate this dude more than any of the villains in here. Protected the New Republic by ignoring direct orders. No, I protected the New Republic by ignoring you. Yes. Yes. Exactly. But this report reads like a child's fairy tale. Jedi. False Jedi. Star maps, star whales, distant galaxies. Can we just get rid of this dude? He clearly is a coward who does not want to see the obviousness in front of his face. There is no proof of any coordination between the scattered and dwindling number of Imperial forces. What about the conflict on Mandalore? Exactly. And friend. what about the shipyards just Gideon earlier? Gideon warlord acting on I mean, his own. Really? There is no proof of a greater conspiracy and thus no immediate threat to this Republic. If Thrawn returns, that will change quickly. <laughs> if. Dude, this dude is infuriating me. Uh, identification. I do not need to show you identification. No way! I am C-3PO. They brought 3PO in this? I am here on behalf of Senator Leia Organa. Of course. 
I mean, you really can't have Leia in this, but what better way to have Leia in this than by having 3PO speak on her behalf? Beautiful. The Honorable Senator Organa has become aware of a, an unfortunate situation. The transcript shows that Senator Organa personally sanctioned General Syndulla's reconnaissance mission to Cetos. This is preposterous. The court cannot admit evidence of this kind from a mere droid. Ooh. What? What? Dude, that is not a mere droid. That is C-3PO. That seems to settle the matter. Yes, Unless it does. you remain unsatisfied, Senator Sieno? No, Madam Chancellor. Court dismissed. Good riddance. Gee. I know she did not authorize your mission. She did. Eventually. <laughs> that sounds like a Leia thing to do. How real is the threat of Thrawn's return? We have to prepare for the worst. And hope for the best. At this point, prepare for the worst is going to be way more accurate. Oh boy, I don't know how this is going to be stopped, but honestly, this feels like we're just watching the beginning of the First Order right here. Not even going to lie. Wait, what's this? <laughs> more Anakin, all right! You can never go wrong with more Anakin. General Grievous, Asajj Ventress. I was about to say, I thought they were going Tales of the Jedi route here. As your master, it's my responsibility to prepare you to practice these forms often. I won't always be there and look out for you. Mm -hmm. If we get separated or something happens, you need to be able to make it on your own. I know you can do this, Ahsoka. Hmm. <laughs> wow. He made 20 or more of these recordings. This was his last one. Very thoughtful. I never realized. You know, especially when you know really how impulsive he was, the fact that he took that time to do that, to really try to be a good teacher, that really speaks a lot about the bigger character that is Anakin Skywalker. I would point out that you are assuming the Star Whales have brought us to the correct galaxy, let alone the same system or even the same planet where Lady Ren was taken. Jeez. I think the odds are pretty good. No. No, in fact, they're terrible. Astronomically terrible. Well, you should have said something. I did, but you never... <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. And I love the fact that she's getting a kick out of it, too. Okay, what's going I'm on picking here? up a lot of interference. Something's wrong. Well, yeah, they're coming. They go there to die. So maybe the thing is dying. I am detecting multiple. That... Let's get out oh there. no. Perhaps we are safer in here. I wonder if that's an area unit attacking the whales. Oh. Oh no. Dude, they set up a minefield! Oh no! Head towards the planet. The field eventually terminates. Yeah, I think it's safe to say you guys are in the right spot. Oh no! At least no. the whales are providing some cover. You had to say something. Okay, well, we were thinking it. She just said it. Oh boy. Alright, Snips, come on. You learned from probably the best star pilot in the galaxy. Right, this thing's got me calling her Snips now. And we are clear. Yes, you are, and there's your hyperspace ring. Well, we found the enemy. Yes, you did. I'm going to make for the debris field. I would not recommend that. Come on, where's that optimism? I can't find an opening. The field is too dense. Oh man, I'm starting to get... You know, I know I think I was thinking this in episode 3 when they were going through... I mean, actually at that point I think they are going through like the... I don't know if you want to call them tentacles of the space wells and everything when they are trying to avoid uh, Sin and Maroc. More than ever right there, I'm getting a feeling of Empire Strikes Back when they're in that um, asteroid field. It would seem as like a time I was alive and well after all. Here's everything the Inquisitorial mm -hmm. database had on her. 
The master was General Anakin Skywalker. Yes. Mm hmm. AKA Darth Vader. Withdraw the fighters and have them stand by. Why not allow them to follow? What's your game here? And if she's anything like her master, she'll be unpredictable and quite dangerous. Right. This is why we must control all variables. Put her on a path of her own choosing. So that no matter which direction she takes, we'll always be one step ahead of her. So they're get, giving her an opening. That's always the worst when the enemy lets you go. I do not like this. How did they anticipate our arrival? What is there to like? Thrawn was behind that attack. Yes, then yes the it enemy was. has already found him. It would seem so. I will run a scan to see if I can locate Lady Ren. Probably gonna use them. Well, I mean, Balin and Shin are pretty much on their trail. But mix that and then send the fighters to follow Ahsoka and all them to uh, find them. That's pretty much setting up for an ambush. I'm still trying to process everything you told me. The Empire yep. was defeated. You've missed a lot, my dude. The Emperor died. That's what people say. There's a new republic. Mm -hmm. Zeb's training recruits and Hera's commanding fleet. Yep. I missed everything. How did you? What? Find me. You never said. It's complicated. She doesn't want to say. We could talk about something else, I guess. Okay, I think he gets the idea how bad it is. Ahsoka took me on as her apprentice. She what? Why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really, my dude? <laughs> yeah, so where is Ahsoka? Is she coming? She thinks Ahsoka's dead. That's complicated. Yeah. Not as complicated as you think. Yeah, she has no idea that Ahsoka's alive. That's right. Ahsoka Tano lies hidden within the graveyard. Find her? Yes, Grand Admiral. I'm going to get out of this mess. I think they need to start making these series like 10 episodes because I honestly don't know how they're going to tie up all these loose ends in just two episodes. But then again, never underestimate Dave. He'll he'll find a way. Nothing. I cannot locate Lady Ren. We don't need a scan. There's another way. Come on, man. Come on. Yes. Ahsoka. Found her. I see her. Uh -oh. The Jedi is there. Cause she reached out. They found us. Don't worry. I know where we're going. Wonderful. So on our way. <laughs> I love who Yang. I would love to see who Yang and three PO have a powwow together. That would be an absolutely interesting conversation. Tano will pursue Sabine Wren, whom we have wisely sent far from here. Contact the fighter group and have them re-engage the opponent. There it is. You just set up an ambush. And they're using Ahsoka. Oh. Contact thrown. Kill Sabine Wren and Ezra Bridger. Then take your place in the coming empire. Wait, what? You won't help? Your ambition drives you in one direction. My path lies in another. Uh, wait a minute. What's going on? Okay, no, seriously. What's going on? One parting lesson, Shin. Impatience for victory will guarantee defeat. There is a lot of truth in that statement. And that goes for just about darn near anything. I dare say that can even apply for, you know, video gaming. So what's going on? So they're parting ways now? Oh, I can't imagine she feels good about this. Dispatch two gunships to assist the mercenaries. If Lord Balin proves capable. We may yet win the day. He's not even going to be involved. So what's... 
so what's he going to do? I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> That is a good point. I mean, to be fair, that's a very good point. They've survived that long with only slingshots as defense. Those are really cute creatures. Oh! <laughs> oh boy. Like you, but lacks your sense of humor. Lightsaber? Oh yeah. Great. <laughs> All right, so. We're gonna get uh Shin and Sabine part three. Won't need to land. Oh no, this again. Yes, this again. Once uh, I'm on the ground, draw the fighters away. Yes, yes, of course. Just remember what happened last time. You got the timing wrong? And didn't I feel terrible? No! <laughs> okay, I appreciate the fact that they had that little back and forth right there. <laughs> Okay, so we are gonna get a uh, Balin Ahsoka part two. Didn't expect to see you again. Disappointed? No. Can't allow you to interfere. I don't have time for this. That I know. Oh boy. How's she gonna handle him this time? Okay. Okay, and we got this too. Okay, there is a lot going on at the same time. The force is my ally. That's all I need. Well, I'm gonna need more than that. Okay, I'm gonna need some um, demonstration here. Okay. Reminds me of uh, Donnie Yen's character in Rogue One a little bit. Okay, I'm actually kind of liking this, Ezra. Ooh, okay. Wow, look at look at her go. You can definitely tell she's moving with more fluidity. <laughs> oh my goodness, I mean, at least they're trying. Oof. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was close. Close. <laughs> Woo. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. It's not looking good for you. No, it's. You just had to say something. You can't defeat me. Perhaps. I don't have to. Oh. 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 Oh, nice. She done stole your ride, too. <laughs> what else would you expect from the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker? Again, the lesson from episode five of Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, Anakin's, you know, need for victory blinds him. She just did what needed to be done. We have them. Our sight is short one mercenary. Where's Bell and Scott? That's a very good question. Oh, uh, that's... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh! Ooh! Okay, there's a lot to... take in here. Thrawn realizes Bell and Skull's not there. We could... talk. Don't you want to take us as prisoners? As prisoners. Huh? Or, Fire! Uh... Oh, what the? Snaps! <laughs> okay, so now we got Snips versus Shin. Part one. Well, they're all back together. I hope I survive long enough to see the outcome. <laughs> okay. This dude, I tell you what. Ezra. Dang, Ezra. Maybe we need to get a series of uh, Ezra's time on Peridia. 
You know, I'm actually very down for that. Dave Filoni, we need a show of Ezra with his time on Peridia. Make it happen. In the grand scheme of things, one might even call this first match with Tano a success. How so? I see only our enemies reunited. Let me show you what I see. Yes, what do you see? With our enemy distracted, the cargo transfer is now almost complete. Oh! This forsaken place. Asoka Tano has lost the one thing she could not afford to lose today. Time. Time. Time is very much on our side now. Because they are like right there, ready to go back. Oh no. She knows something's up. She knows something's up. Come on, Shin. You gotta sense it. You are nothing but a tool to throw on. I can help you. Shin, come on. Oh my goodness, she's probably feeling so betrayed right now. Her master left. For all intents and purposes, her troops left. The How fact that she smiled like that at her says a lot. I miss this reunion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, this is really nice to see from Ahsoka. You thought she was dead. Hey. Really, I was wrong. She told you it was complicated. Ah, the gang's back together. Only thing that would have made it better is if Hera could have been here somehow. I think I might be going home after all. Well, I would love to see how y'all are going to pull that off. Because you have no coordinates to get home, but... You know what? Let's just take this feel-good moment. Oh, wait, is that how it ends? Of course it would be. Alright, y'all. That was part 7 of Star Wars Ahsoka Dreams and Madness. And man, I tell you what. I honestly don't know how they are going to pull off episode 8 because it feels like there is still so many questions that need to be answered, so much that is going to happen. I don't know how you fit it into one episode unless it's an extended episode. I, I know lately like they've all been, actually amazingly enough, they've all been pretty close to the same in runtime. I think the shortest one is probably like 37 minutes or something, something like that. But other than that, they've all been around like, the, you know, like the 45 minute range. But, uh, yeah, I just don't know how you can get all what's left in just 45 minutes. But it could be an extended, an extended episode. Because if I remember correctly, I think that's what they did with the season finale uh, in season two of Mandalorian. I think that one was an extended episode. But maybe they do the same with that. Which, if that's the case... I may no I'll probably just I'll probably record and edit the same but just uh because of how long these edits take I may uh move the day of the release but we'll cross that bridge when we get there but man that feels like there's a whole lot that needs to be done in that one episode I hope it's not like a sensory overload but then again again if they extend the episode I think they could get away with it because what is up with Balin Skull what is Shin going to do? Is she going to get back and probably get, I mean, some sort of vile treatment from Thrawn because of what Balin did, even though she had nothing to do with it? Or is she just going to go in there and try to take Thrawn out herself because she feels betrayed, which then what do the grandmothers do? Um, oh, man, so many questions, so much things to unpack. But I will say this. I love the beginning with Ahsoka training, with that hollow recording of Anakin Skywalker. That was really cool to see. One of the things I noticed, at least I feel like, is it feels like her movements were a lot more fluid. And you could even tell that when she had her rematch with Balin, because she seemed a lot more, I don't want to say aggressive, 
but it feels like in this one she wasn't holding back as much and i think the reason she was holding back so much in the first one was hit on in episode five when she was going through her training with anakin it's because of her fear of giving in to her darkness but once she realized that yeah the darkness is in her but just because that is part of the legacy she is that doesn't define her she is more than that and she can control like what she does with it and Anakin can even show that too how he was able to go from like full on sith to back to his normal self you know to show that he has that control and she was able to control that as well and you could easily see that so i think what she learned that and learned that you know she was more than what you know he became as vader then she was able to be more fluid and more free and you could really see that really made a difference with her fight in Balin. And not only that, the fact that she knew that she didn't need to beat him right there. You know, she just needed to live. Yeah, she needed to fight him, but she had that plan to where she just basically stole his ride and went on. And you could kind of see, it's almost like when he was done and realized he was gone, it wasn't like he wasn't like usually you see the villains they have that look of disappointment or like like how could i you know fail or lose this battle or anything like that it's almost as if i don't want to say he was disappointed he almost looked impressed but you could almost see a little bit so balin is such an interesting character and honestly if Ray had not passed away. I would love a series on him. He is such an interesting character. I would love to know more of his story. And Ray knocked this out of the park. Rest in peace, my dude. Oh man, if only. Man. So but yeah, I'm very curious to see, you know, really what's his deal. He's definitely probably one of the most interesting villains in anything because I don't necessarily really want to call him a villain it's like he still has a sense of honor about him like I almost feel like I know um, with Luke I've always talked about how Luke felt like he was the perfect balance between light and dark when it came to light side versus dark side because Luke clearly tapped into the dark side when he defeated Vader in Return of the Jedi, but he had enough control of himself that he didn't go too far because he realized the path he was going down. And I always felt like that really made him the perfect Jedi because he wasn't so stuck on just one side. He understood the dark side but he would not give in to the dark side you know it's kind of like I guess you could say in a way knowing your enemy's playbook I don't know if that makes any sense I hope I'm making sense with this but but with Balin's skull it's like he's almost like Luke except in the opposite direction in a way he's more dark side than light but at the same time he still has like a sense of honor about him and it almost makes me want to question what happened. I assumed he probably worked very closely with Anakin Skywalker. And seeing Anakin turn is what made him really turn away from the Jedi. But yet, at the same time, he never went full-on Sith. So he obviously realizes that that's not the way to go either. And I know that's where the term Dark Jedi comes. Because he's probably more Jedi than Sith. But at the same time... He's definitely more dark side than light. So I'm very interested to see how his arc ends with this. Does he end up, you know, pursuing his own agenda and trying to take everybody out? Does he join with Ahsoka? Does he continue to work with Thrawn? What does Shin do? Does she try to take out Thrawn? Or, you know, does she try to do something to cause them to destroy Balin? I mean... And then Ahsoka, uh, Sabine, and Ezra, what do they do? And most importantly, do they get to Thrawn in time to keep him from leaving? Or do they even somehow get into that hyperspace ring when they leave? I mean, 
there are so many things that I really want to see happen in the next episode. But most important, it's just, does Thrawn make it back? Does something happen to where none of them make it back? Which might explain why none of them are in the sequel trilogy, but... Oh boy. I tell you what, that's a lot of stuff to try to figure out in just one episode. And I hope they try to spend a little more than 45 minutes to do it. I trust they will, though. I mean, honestly, the way this show has done, I have no reason to have any doubts about what they're going to do with the next episode. But, oh boy. All right, well, I think that's going to pretty much do it for this. So we'll go ahead and cut it. I thank you all for... Uh, joining me this has been a great series so far and i'm honestly not ready for it to end but you know all good things must come to an end so we got the finale next week really looking forward to that so thank you guys for stopping by i hope you all enjoyed the reaction and i will see you guys next week for the finale of star wars ahsoka <laughs>